today on the CTV News at 5. The Alberta Health Services Board fired for not reconsidering bonuses promised in executive contracts. Plus, why you could see a double-digit hike in car insurance payments next year. And how Lethbridge goes green with its newest recycling station. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. It's a decision that's causing jaws to drop across the province. The health minister has fired the entire Alberta Health Services Board over its refusal to give up executive bonuses. Critics say it's the latest episode in a long history of bungling and mismanagement by government. But as Terry Boat discovered, many Southern Albertans seem to support the decision. It was a quick reaction to the reaction. Early this morning, I informed the Alberta Health Services Board Chair and the members of the AHS Board that I am terminating their appointments effective immediately. Alberta Health Minister Fred Horn announced he was firing AHS Board Chair Stephen Lockwood and the entire board, a day after the board refused a government directive to reconsider a decision to pay out $3.2 million in executive bonuses at a time when the government was asking doctors, nurses and other frontline workers to accept a pay freeze. It was uh, concerning to me to learn at the end of last week that a number of the senior executives had voluntarily offered to for forego their bonuses and for them to be told that they can't do that uh, is offensive. I think it's offensive to them because they're, they're a credit to themselves and their peers. Uh, it's offensive to Albertans and it's certainly offensive to me. Effective immediately, the government has appointed health executive Janet Davidson as official administrator to act in place of the board. Critics have been quick to respond. Friends of Medicare says the government has to take responsibility, not only for creation of AHS, but also what's happened since. We have just lurched from crisis to crisis uh, that this government has, has made for themselves. And the people who suffer are the people who are waiting in emergency rooms or waiting for long-term care uh, or waiting for services at home. The union that represents nurses in Alberta is seeking an immediate meeting with the health minister to clarify the details surrounding today's announcement. They say it's bound to cause confusion and paralysis throughout the AHS and that the matter needs to be resolved as quickly as possible. But on the streets of Lethbridge, many people are backing the health minister on this one. Change is good. I don't think there ever should have been a super board, quite, quite frankly. I think that uh, it's just been an opportunity for all of them to be pigs at a trough. Sorry to use that language, but it's how I feel. I'm a long-term care nurse. I see firsthand what happens when these cuts come down. I see the things that our seniors aren't getting, and I see the the problems with keeping staff because there's there's no budget for them and they have to roll all the staff back. I think it's it's great that Fred Horn stepped up. Horn says it's not about power and control, but he says Albertans look to their MLAs and government to ensure things are running smoothly in the health system. Terry Vote, CTV News, Lethbridge. The health minister says this won't result in any immediate changes and that the board members will not get any severance. Health Minister says this is an opportunity to consult with staff, communities and patients to meet the objectives of delivering better quality health care with shorter wait times. Now, meanwhile, the president of the Alberta Union of Provincial Employees says someone had to end the standoff. Uh, on the one hand, it creates more uh, confusion and chaos in the health care system. And, and if you talk to any of our members that work the front lines, they've been through so many changes and, and we've seen cuts to positions and cuts to services that all they want to do is just show up and do their work and provide services to Albertans. So this may create a bit more chaos in the system, uh, but it also provides an opportunity for the minister to actually appoint a board that is dedicated to providing services to the people of the province. We've got more on the board firing follow coming up at 5.30 and 6. Dory, a couple of big weather stories today. We've got around the Edmonton area concerns about tornadoes, southeastern area, some serious weather there too. Absolutely, and it's from two uh, low pressure centers that we're watching. One is rotating through the north, and that's what's causing those uh, funnel cloud uh, sightings. And boy, if they weren't tornadoes, I've seen some of the pictures. They're really close facsimiles of. And then another low pressure center moving up from Montana, affecting southeastern area of the province. I'll give you more details in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Dory. 
A former Medicine Hat massage therapist accused of eight counts of sexual assault took the stand in his own defense today. Six of his clients alleged that they've been inappropriately touched between 2009 and 2011. Many of the women testified that his clothed private parts came in contact with their body. A few also claimed their breasts were touched inappropriately. Softa continues to deny the allegations. Now, a 20-year-old Lethbridge man will stand trial for a sexual assault at the University of Lethbridge last fall. The charges date back to last September. Officers say the man was invited into a residence at the university. He entered another part of the dormitory, though, went into a bedroom of a sleeping 19-year-old woman and sexually assaulted her. Scott Mervyn Plypow was 19 at the time. He'll appear in court of Queen's Bench next month. They've carried signs and they've even marched. Today we take a closer look at some of the lives of the people who have been affected by the projected $42 million budget cutbacks. The money slashed would normally fund the agencies helping some of the most vulnerable people in our province through the PDD program. Jeanette Roche reports. Joanne McLeod spends about five hours a day sorting food and making hampers at the Lethbridge Food Bank. She's been volunteering here for three years. But to her, it's more than just a job. It makes me feel really good. It makes me feel happy. This sense of fulfillment is possible in part because of this woman. Jen Groen is a community access worker in Joanne's Lifeline. Every day, she accompanies Joanne to the food bank and other activities. She's also in contact with a lot of other stuff that she does, like bowling, integrated bowling. And um, she also does like dance class at the college. So we were pretty busy. But provincial budget cuts could flatline Joanne's lifestyle. If cuts to persons with developmental delays does take effect, Jerome could be out of a job and Joanne could be left on her own. She wouldn't see her mom at all. I don't think she'd have any access to her friends because she doesn't drive and she can't take the public bus. So she would really be disconnected. And Joanne is just one in nearly 10,000. I just wish that they would stop doing this to people with disabilities. Um, they need to make a change because sooner or later if they don't, then we're going to have to make our, our decisions ourselves. Premier Allison Redford says members of her cabinet are meeting with community leaders in Lethbridge to reassure families and PDD clients. We know the transition is important and we're absolutely committed to making sure that vulnerable people in our community continue to receive the services that they need. Vulnerable Albertans aren't the only ones who will be affected. If PDD cuts go into effect, the Lethbridge Food Bank and many other nonprofits will feel the negative impact. It's huge. I mean, that's a lot of our volunteer base. So without volunteers, we aren't able to do our day-to-day -day operation. Jeanette Roche, CTV News, Lethbridge. We could see a double-digit hike in car insurance payments next year. The Insurance Bureau of Canada is lobbying for a nearly 13.5% increase to mandatory rates. So if your premium is $1,000 this year, next year, you'll be paying an extra $135. We'll know by August if the jump is approved. The Canadian food retail market has seen a major shift today in a massive deal. Sobeys is buying its rival Safeway here in Canada. Sobeys is actually owned by the Empire Company Limited out of Nova Scotia. The deal, $5.8 billion for the assets of Safeway in Canada. That's the 213 stores here in Western Canada, along with the gas stations and liquor stores and any real estate the store owns. The deal has many people wondering about their rewards programs. Sobeys and Safeway both have their own and the two will be merged into one. No word yet though on how that's going to impact air miles that you can also get at Safeway. 24 businesses plans were submitted, but in the end, it was a Lethbridge Arborist who took home top prize at this year's Chinook Entrepreneur Challenge. Ladybug Arborist, operated by Marine Sexsmith West, provides quality care for trees, shrubs, and gardens in both residential and municipal areas. The annual business planning competition is hosted by the Community Futures Lethbridge Division. Now she takes home a $10,000 cash prize. Environmentally conscious West Lethbridge residents are celebrating the opening of a new recycling station. The facility officially opened today at the top of Bridge Drive. It will open seven days a week between the hours of 7 and 7. The site has the ability to handle compost, cardboard, plastic, metal and tree branches. Operators of the site say the response from users has been extremely positive. 
basically they can bring all their leaves now and grass clippings and branches in here instead of putting it in the, uh, the bins at home. We'd rather have them bring it to the Green West Way sites to do that as well. The West Side people are definitely excited to have it over here so they don't have to drive through town to get to it. Waste and Recycling Services is holding a Customer Appreciation Day Saturday at both its Stafford Drive and Bridge Drive locations. It goes from 11 until 2. They'll be offering site tours and providing information on how to reduce waste. And onto the markets is the Dow's worst losing streak of the year. Here are the day's closing numbers.